Hey friends, tickets are now available for our new series of live workshops taking place in November and December. They're focused on getting coffee professionals and small business owners better prepared for 2023. There's one for coffee professionals, one for those looking to start or grow their business as a coffee consultant, and there's one for customer acquisition planning that's tailored to small business owners. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash events to grab tickets or check the show notes for details. Welcome back to the Daily Coffee Pro by Map It Forward, friends. I'm your host, Lee Safa, and I'm joined by my friend, Abby Munoz from Monarch Coffee. And this is the third of a five-part series. And in today's episode, as we explore our theme, Abby, of a closed loop supply chain for coffee in Hawaii, I want to ask you, what surprised you about being a coffee producer who, who is really the custodian of the entire supply chain? All of it, like how much work it all takes. Um, I was surprised, you know, I thought I was pretty business savvy, but I was surprised to not know what I thought I knew. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I had this presumption, right? Like we'd had successful businesses in the, you know, prior to coffee. And I, I presumed that it like translated and it's the whole, it doesn't, right? Like mm. grocery store math is totally different than coffee math. If we're talking yep. coffee math, um, yep. I was surprised, you know, there've been times where, and, and I don't know what it is. Maybe I just assume, you know, when you're looking from the outside in, but my friends who I have a super dear friend, who's a producer in Peru and, you know, I mean, one day this huge storm came in and they had all this fruit on the tree, on the trees. And I mean, he just, he's like, next thing I knew, F this, F that, Abby, all these people started showing up and they're just like picking coffee. Right. And there's this community of people that like came in and just like claimed it almost as that harvest as their own. Like if we don't get this off the tree, we all lose. Yeah, wow. And last wow. December, we had something similar happen to that. And, and I was sharing with Daniel, I said, I, like, how do we get this fruit off? And he's like, pick up a couple of calls. And I was like, are you kidding? Like, no one is answering the phone, you know? And I, and that's the part that surprises me is that, is that, um, you know, we all are vying for this, um, place, right? I thought in 2018, when we won, uh, the state cupping competition, um, that all of a sudden all these green coffee buyers are just going to flood our gates and be like, Whoa, we want to buy that coffee. And I know what our cost of production was. And I tried really hard to price it so that it was fairly. Um, and yeah, we sold, I mean, it was our first year, so we didn't have a ton of volume, but I had a lot of coffee. I had to figure out how to sell. Mm -hmm. And that's where my pivot happened that I was like, we always wanted to to damper or, you know, dabble in, in coffee roasting and just offer it kind of for ourselves and friends and family. And we weren't really going to be in the farm tour industry. We just, you know, um, and I realized I have this coffee I need to sell. And that was where I pivoted from being like, okay, mom and puppy were a hobby. Like, let's turn this into it. Like this needs to be a viable business. We can't just sit on green coffee And now I had to learn how to build a website and like we, you know, like this is a a collective family operation. Um, And then a year later, COVID hit. Wow. What was that surprise like? Well, I think I was naive, right? Like we, we really hadn't hit like this huge, and I don't think I really realized this until today that that was the timeline, right? Like, we won the cupping competition that all happened 2019 and then bam february was covid mm. and the, and then we're all screaming figuring out how to try to you know make sure we're all on island cuz we were all getting locked in or locked out and you know so i was in the middle of trying to build this customer base and holy cow Wow. Wanted Did, to uh, open farm tours and then literally we were open for one week and then we closed. <laughs> what? So you opened the farm tours and then you had to close the farm tours a week after. Wow. Yeah. 
So we decided to do the farm tours just about when the state was starting to say, hey, you know, we're going to open up. We were open for three or four weeks and then um, we closed, the state closed again mandates. And so we turned off the farm tours and then we waited until really the state fully opened up. Um, so we have been in full tour operation just at Thanksgiving. It'll be one year. Wow. And so, so it's new for us. So you start the farm tours that gets cut off at the knees. What's the next strategy after that? uh direct to consumer social media direct to consumer where can i grow that i we you know we had a pretty decent social media following i started working with some other um farmers growing mm -hmm. uh, like in a mastermind group um and that seemed to help a little bit to understand more the agriculture sales portion mm -hmm. of it and how to market that um, and it grew our following pretty well. Um, and people started reaching out and wanting to do, um, like the farm tour, the walking tour was pretty popular. And then I had a friend, uh, from this mastermind group or a colleague, I guess. And she said, Hey, I'd really like to see like really the whole process. Could you, could, would you mind putting that together for me? Doesn't matter what it looks like, but I'd really like to see that. And so that kind of turned into this roasting experience and cupping workshops, brewing workshops, and there you go. And yeah, wow. the roasting experience is one of our most popular. Um, the, the direct and consumer has been a little bit slow. And I think it's because that we are growing such an experience and producing an experience coffee mm -hmm. it's a different it's a difficult entry level coffee would you well, agree like I don't uh, know totally. if I'm saying that right no you're you're saying it perfectly because what well, people don't realize like for those who actually know outside of Hawaii that Hawaii produces coffee like you don't really know this until you visit and you go on a Kona coffee farm tour like, mm -hmm. or you hear it on a podcast where somebody's talking about Kona coffee. Like it's not because you guys have a closed loop system, you haven't really marketed outside of that. And so uh, what people don't recognize is that coffee that's grown in in Hawaii is that's the territory of America. And so wages are higher. Uh, inputs are higher. Everything's purchased in American dollars. Everything's sold in American dollars. And this creates a higher entry level from a price perspective than supermarket coffee. Yeah. And so people take yeah. a look at it and they're like, well, whoa, 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 whoa. Why am I spending $50 for a pound of coffee? Well, because this is what it costs to produce coffee when you're yeah. paying wages. Yeah, I would say too that the labor force, that is the most surprising me to me. People don't want to work. People don't come to work. You, um, I mean, I think we're, we're a pretty right place to work. You know, like I think we're good people. Um, we're fair. We pay a great living. I mean, living wages for sure, you know, mm -hmm. above uh, offer benefits, but like getting pickers, getting pickers here to Hawaii or finding pickers and we are at the mercy of our pickers we can call and say hey we'd like you every two weeks and they'll say sure 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 we'll get you that'll be our rotation you'll be our number one farm and then then this harvest comes and they haven't been here for four weeks and I've got fruit rotting on the tree and I can't the five of us can't even pick it fast fast enough well actually seven of us um we can't even get it off the tree you know and so mm. we've tried on farm we have added on farm housing um but that part is a huge surprise to me as a as a producer and this is when I say like every chain in the supply chain in coffee is experiencing labor shortages this is yeah. it's a it's a real thing like Cafes are going out of business because of it and so are coffee roasters, but so are producers. Like if you go too many harvests with your fruit not getting picked and not turning it into product, you're going to eventually really, really shorten your runway, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, yeah. and I have heard this from producers all over the world 
The big problem is they can't find a workforce. This is particularly post-pandemic. Yeah. So really interesting. So where do they come from, right? And what do you do about it? Mm. If anybody has an answer, I'd love to have, like, have a cup of coffee and talk about it <laughs> or, like, just an opinion about it, you know? Like, yeah, uh, it's really an interesting thing. Um, and, and, you know, they tell us what they're going to pick. They're going to tell us how much we're going to pay them. They tell us when they will be arriving. They tell us when they're going to be leaving. And my, you know, colleagues in other origins are saying that's not the way that it works here right like you have a hard time finding the right amount of pickers but there are parameters if we say this is the type of fruit we're looking for then that's what coffee pickers bring you they have to be specialized in doing that right yeah yeah Yeah, so we then rely on innovation and machinery so that we can take that really super ripe prime fruit that we're looking for and yep. separate it and then you know we have now two lots to kind of figure out a home for which then becomes more but, labor intensive which then becomes more expensive and it goes on down the value chain in the next episode i want to explore what happens then like how do you then take that and create a customer acquisition plan out of that like how do you then turn around and figure out how to create a direct-to-consumer business from there. Shall we do that? Sure. Let's do it. Peace, love, and peanut butter, everybody. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in, friends. There are two ways you can support this podcast. Firstly, become a paid member of our YouTube channel. Secondly, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you leave and check the show notes for more information. Now, this is what you should check out next.